Morning, everyone. Thank you for coming. Um, my name is Chad Gordon. I'm the uh, chair of the uh, Mount Anthony um, Spinelli Field Complex Ad Hoc Committee. It's a subcommittee uh, from the Mount Anthony Board. Um, first off, thank you guys for coming out on a Monday night. Um, it's hoping for more of a turnout. Hopefully some people are coming. We have a couple people on Zoom at home, so thank you for being here as well. And um, obviously coming to a meeting like this means you guys care about something in our building, either a child, an athlete, um, you care about your community, so thank you all for coming here, and I appreciate you being here. Um, we're going to get started with um, uh, the agenda. Was, the first item was uh, public comments. And I know there's probably going to be some comments from people here. Uh, I'm going to ask that we're, we're going to have a section for uh, questions and answers after the presentation. So if anyone has any questions, um, ask them after the presentation. Have you come to the mic and um, have you give your name and uh, town anyone from home if you could raise your hand uh, and answer questions or ask questions we'll try to answer them um, but i'll ask if it's about the field we'll save that for after um sound good okay are there any other general questions you know trying to follow the agenda that don't relate to the spinelli field presentation i didn't think so all right so we'll get started with the uh the uh presentation i'm gonna just move off to the side here There we go. All right. So to give you a brief history, uh, about four years ago, um, after a uh, review of Spinelli Field and its conditions um, and uh, comments from the public to the Mount Anthony Board and then Athletic Director Ashley Foyt, uh, the Mount Anthony Board decided to create an ad hoc committee. Uh, that committee had several representation uh, representatives from the school, um, the athletic director, um, was an administrator at the time, uh, and then there were coaches and uh, yeah. parents, community yeah. members. Yeah, two parents, community members. Uh, Susan happened to start as one of our um, uh, members as a parent, and then when she became a board member, took that role, and um, uh, Chandler came on. So, uh, uh, Lori Brock is our other parent. So uh, most of our committee members are here now. Um, you know, two board members are uh, represented, our Dave Fredrickson, Susan Plaisance. Um, Tony D'Onofrio is on as an administrator, as our director of facilities, uh, Mike Malloy, as our um, athletic director, and um, Paul Redding and myself as uh, coaches on the uh, committee. Uh, parents, uh, Shayla Sakura and Lori Rotten are the other parents. Um, Shayla also happens to be a Mount Anthony board member, and Lori is also the president of uh, Mount Anthony Booster Club. Uh, so that, that committee was formed four years ago. Again, not everyone's been on the full four years, but that was formed four years ago. Um, as a committee, we uh, Started to research what were the issues, what do we need to fix. Uh, the Mount Anthony Board authorized uh, uh, a feasibility study to be done by. Uh, we'll get to the next slide. I might need your help. It's supposed to work. Right here. There we go. Uh, so the engineering study was done by MSK. We saw the, um, you know, the feasibility. What would be the uh, best course of action? Uh, you know, looking at the turf versus grass, um, you know, what could we do to the facility? And, uh, you know, looking at their report and talking to the different companies, we thought the, the best uh, course of action at that time was to go with a turf field, upgrade the track, upgrade the lights. And there was a multi-use uh, storage ticket um, facility that was going to be in. That project went to a vote in November of 21 and unfortunately did not pass. Um, so we, as a committee, came back. We uh, looked at what was uh, what uh, what do we do next? What are our next steps? And uh, in that process, um, we uh, we did a survey with the community uh, about a year ago. We looked at the results from that survey, and the determination was that um, we still need these uh, upgrades. Uh, the Mount Anthony Board, after the failure um, of the last bond vote, has. Uh, had uh, contracted to upgrade Spinelli, the grass field that was there. Uh, we saw that uh, the usage of the field got better, but we were still only using about 20 uh, events a year and it was still breaking down. We had to do upgrades again the following year. So in the last two years since that vote, a significant amount of the Mount Anthony budget um, of athletics has been put towards upgrading Spinelli. Next slide. 
All right, so uh, the field, obviously, the, the current condition of the field, um, you know, the, the field is 50 plus years old uh, with the maintenance that we've done. The current field is not a regulation soccer field, so it's not wide enough. Uh, it's enough to play the games, but uh, Mike, as a soccer coach, can attest uh, for a long time. Um, it's not the actual size of the pitch. Um, the uh, uneven surfaces, uh, the divots, uh, the holes, we've made attempts to make those better, but it still is a problem as we have right now. And uh, talk about usage right now. Currently, there's about 20 to 25 events a year, breaking out to uh, varsity footballs, about four games a year, and uh, the boys and girls soccer uh, use of the field. Uh, my football, JV football, have used the fields in the past, uh, this past year. Uh, they've had to use, uh, like I know you weren't in a position, but they used uh, other fields when they couldn't use Spinelli this year due to field conditions. So. Mike only used it once this year. Okay. Here's some uh, photos from the last, uh, I think, two seasons um, taken up Spinelli Field in its current conditions. I know um, our last home football playoff game is that third photo there. That was our last game against Colchester. And the girls' soccer team had to play a uh, mm -hmm. soccer game, I think, two days, three days after that photo was taken. And there was some debate if we'd even be able to host a playoff soccer game and possibly um, play at an alternative field and not their home field. Uh, other determinations, uh, you know, was the um, the track, I believe, is what's up next. I think it's a survey. Is it so? Yes, sorry, thank you. It's the, uh, so the survey that we, I mentioned earlier. Whoops. There. there we go. Uh, so when we put the survey out, uh, there were several questions and um, the one about uh, the field in need of repair and upgrade. Uh, you can see that 67% strongly agreed and uh, somewhat agreed with 16% and there was another 6% that were neutral. So roughly, um, if you look at the two disagree categories, uh, it was about 10%, uh, about almost 11% disagree either strongly or somewhat that it didn't need repair and upgrade. When we then asked about the upgrades on the survey about going to synthetic turf, we had uh, almost 50% strongly agreed and another 15% agree. So as a committee, we looked at those numbers and said, all right, the community still wants this. The survey was put out online, in person, uh, it was shared with the, uh, the town of Bennington, the YMCA, um, the senior center, and just we were able to take some time and um, analyze that data. So this was one of the other driving forces. That says, okay, we need the turf field. Uh, we need to. Community wants this, and that's why we um, uh, kept this in this next round of the bond vote. So this survey was after after the failed after the failed vote. Right? It was after the uh, failed vote, and because the question came, do we need? Do, does the community want this? You know, it wasn't just us up there saying like, we wanted to get that input from the community. Uh, findings of the track. Uh, it says it hasn't been resurfaced in close to 20 years. I, I know that's probably closer to 30. I know when I think of the 90s, I think that was only 20 years ago, but in 2024, uh, yeah. you know, it is uh, further away than we think. Um, we can um, unfortunately have some sinkholes that are developing in that track, and uh, it's getting to a point where uh, we have to fix it no matter what. Uh, trying to be uh, fiscally conservative and, and doing this on an economic way. Um, committee that are the companies that do the track and the fields are the same company and bringing them in separate would cost more and bring them in together. There's a significant savings and looking at the uh, track itself, uh, we, you know, we have it in a slide here uh, coming up, but just patching it, companies don't want to come in for just that little piece. So just fixing the problems that the track currently have and only doing a small portion, uh, we can see a photo. Sometimes it wants to work. You can see here, this is on the south turn of the track. Um, just good timing when that's during the snow melt. Uh, you can't see it when it's not, when it's dropped. You can't. And that, that's where the uh, the hazards come in with running because these are dips. Um, and that's why water is pooling there because it's, it's puddling. So these are sinkholes that are developing. And there's another series of these that are developing on the north end of the track. Um, so Clearly, it has to be done. Just doing that portion alone, you'll see in the slides, Tony got a quote for uh, 56,000. 50, 55,000 just to patch. Yeah, just to do a patch, and that patch is a 
just the corner. It's not the whole track. Uh, so trying to piece it together again, you felt let's resurface the entire track. Uh, to me, this is a, a more pressing need for our athletes. Uh, if this continues to get worse, we won't be able to hold post track meets. I think of uh, community uh, partners that use them, like Special Olympics or Relay for Life. I would hate that not have that as a community resource uh, for those uh, partners. And then survey results similar. You can see 56% um, uh, strongly agreed, somewhat agreed about the um, um, in need of upgrades. And um, you know, we, uh, you know, it's a resurface track, is a needed project. So similar type questions, is it a needed project? And um, again, I look at the, not to look at the negative, but if you look at the two disagree columns, it's just uh, just about 15% disagrees with this project. So overwhelmingly, we felt we have to keep the track in this project. And then the lighting. Uh, those lights are, I think, original to the field. Um, We've had problems over and over again with overheating, turning off. Uh, I, I remember for mid 2000s, uh, Jim Fisher losing a game with the lights turning off against Fairhaven with like six minutes to go, being down a touchdown, and they called the game and they couldn't get the lights turned back on and they never came back to play it and they counted as a loss. So I, I think of those events um, where the lights would just shut off for some reason. Uh, but bigger than the equity issues, it's, uh, it's not uh, equipped for small ball, meaning lacrosse. Um, or field hockey. So at night, those teams can't play. Lacrosse can't, doesn't use that field currently. So by adding turf and adding the newer lights, we can make it more equitable for all our student athletes to use the facility. And cost effective, obviously LED, any of you that have switched over LEDs in your house, you know the savings on the energy. Uh, speaking with someone recently, uh, uh, a business owner in town uh, turned over his um, lights in his parking lot and noticed the 90% dip in his uh, electric bill for his business, just by switching uh, to LED uh, poles for the exterior lights. So huge cost savings in the uh, uh, cost of electricity, but also you know the, the using less energy. Again, same thing, similar results for the lights. So when we analyzed all three, the community clearly said after the, you know, we had the failed vote last time, why did it fail? According to the results that we took after that, it wasn't because of the lights, the track, or the turf. There were other reasons. We felt those were the three priorities. So we removed the, um, the multi-use um, storage facility that's been taken off. And um, we just focused on the three main priorities from we saw from the survey. So this bond vote will just be for the, the turf field, the resurfacing of the track, and the new lights. Yeah. Uh, here's some uh, just some cost analysis of the uh, current. Did you uh, uh, current costs of the uh, track and uh, field. Uh, about seventy thousand is being spent um, from our maintenance budget. Um, that's almost twenty thousand on paid supplies and man hours uh, for the soccer and football lining. Um, cutting of the lawn over about two thousand dollars and. Uh, I thank Peter Janellis, I don't know how many times for the donation of time and effort that he's put into that field. He has built approximately 50,000 um, each year, uh, but the work that he puts in, if Peter wasn't available to be that uh, community member to donate his time and effort, um, we would have to pay a, a, a professional um, landscaping company almost double that. So we, we have had extremely Good fortune, extreme good fortune of having an alumni and great community partner and Peter to do that work on our. He's the, he does the baseball fields as well. Um, we spend about uh, five thousand mow line fertilized the vets field across the street as well. Uh, that's a practice and alternate game field. Um, those numbers, uh, you know, those numbers there might not uh, disappear completely because we'll still use that field. But instead of our um, groundskeepers having to uh, maintain. Finale, they can spend more time maintaining those fields. So the quality of those fields will also increase um, just because we'll have more usage up on the turf. And that's the cost Tony found for um, the same poles in the track, just the patch was 54000 So we felt, you know, after um, discussion of uh, the surveys, um, still the climate in the Northeast, limited growing season, 
the only way to really have an equitable and useful field was to go to turf. Um, so replacing the grass with turf by doing so will increase the field usage uh, for fall and now spring sports using it. Um, it's not just uh, for games, it could be used for practices and not just for the traditional um, football, soccer, lacrosse, uh, baseball, softball could also use that. Uh, currently, uh, when they have their trials, they're normally in the gym. Uh, the BBA's uh, coach actually commented recently on a post that uh, it's been a game changer since BBA added turf there. But as a baseball coach, he's outside using that outdoor space, taking ground balls, batting practice. And it's really uh, given them an advantage to the teams that are stuck in the gym and they get that uh, outdoor experience for baseball and softball. The uh, last point I want to make on this is an important one because we think of this as a student athlete play. It is a gathering spot for our student athletes, but uh, talking with um, Dave Maselli and other ADs, um, it became when they added the turf field, it's almost like a focal point for all students. Uh, English teachers taking students outside and read on their turf field. Um, the marching band, I think that's on the next slide too. Marching band used going out and being able to use a line field in early spring to work on their. Uh, their spacing and their uh, footwork. So um, other um, positives we saw was uh, having a safe field, uh, as I said, for the band, uh, phys ed classes, um, using it every day. I have a uh, second block freshman in all fall, hearing my second block freshman complain about um, having first block PE and that their shoes are soaked from being up on a wet Spinelli field. So that would at least uh, appease my freshman uh, during my math classes. <laughs> and then lastly, probably one of the more important things is making sure our field is and facility is ADA compliant and accessible and that any improvements we make will um, meet ADA uh, guidelines um, for the field. And that's just the community, obviously. I I'm shocked by the number that disagree that our field. Um, that question was, uh, that we need upgrades to be more accessible with people with disabilities. Uh, how 10% could say they disagree with that, I, I just I, I don't understand that. We um, obviously um, need to uh, do everything we can to make our field accessible. Uh, some other um, community responses that, you know, what else could we use our field for? You can see a variety of things uh, from semi-pro sports, YMCA, uh, adult leagues, you've mentioned the youth sports already. Um, but having um, access to uh, other community partners to come in and use our facility. Here's an example of uh, the newest turf field in the state of Vermont. This is at St. Johnsbury Academy in St. Johnsbury, Vermont. Um, beautiful facility. Uh, I took this photo myself while I attended a camp at that facility with uh, six Vermont Anthony athletes that uh, hosted. So they were able to host a, uh, a camp and um, that's a, a, another, again, uh, resource by the uh, by adding turf. You can't overuse turf. We could open our facility to local camps. And we're in a prime location bordering two states in southern Vermont for offering camps. I know South Burlington, when um, Vermont All-Star Football Camps uses the South Burlington facility, they charge $150 an hour to rent their turf field. So that's a revenue source for the school district there when they rent it out to those community partners. Uh, so again, just um, the vote when you see it on March 5th is uh, the voters are asked to approve up to $3 million. That I'd like up to $3 million. If the project comes in under under that, that's what we're going to spend. You know, we're going to do it the right way. Um, you can see a sample product we have here uh, from Field Turf about what the infill and uh, synthetic grass looks like. But uh, if it's $2.7 million, we're not going to borrow more if we don't need to. Okay, so that's we wanted to make sure we had enough to cover the turf field, the track, and the lights. Some quick math when I see $3 million, I know if that's coming out of my pocket, that sounds like a lot of money. But again, trying to be fiscally responsible, um, you know, we were going to look at either a bond, the, you know, the bond market, or the rates are lower through a bank that is also an option as well. But most likely that it would be through the bond market and spreading it out over 10 years. So one of the quotes we saw would be that would be an annual payment of 350,000 a year spread over 10 years. Again, still sounds like a lot of money, but it's coming out of my pocket. 
So I tried to break it down for your tax bill and knowing changes in Vermont law, which I'm sure some of you are following, uh, it's changed, but in this current year's budget, the 2024 budget, if you increase this year's budget by 350,000, it impacts your tax rate depending on the town you live in. They're all different, Bennington, Shasper, Connell, Woodford, North Bennington. But depending on the town you live in, it would add one cent per hundred dollars of assessed value or one and a half cents per hundred dollars of assessed value of your property. What that means for quick math, if you have a hundred thousand dollar home, your bill would go up 10 to 15 dollars a year per hundred thousand on your tax bill, depending on where you live. So I ran the numbers for my own house, my, my tax bill would go up about 19 dollars for next year. I thought that was a good deal for the upgrades that we clearly need. Some other community benefits for the high school and our athletes is our booster club. Um, you see the events you come to, the 50-50 they sell, the Snack Shack um, on Spinelli uh, serves that food. Uh, you can see that our booster club in 2022 uh, raised almost 10,000 and uh, 11,000 in 2023. Uh, individual teams themselves were able to uh, earn similar dollar amounts the last two years. Uh, Booster Club, for those of you that don't know, every year in the spring, uh, they offer scholarships to our student athletes. They gave, I think, three $1,000 scholarships last year to uh, graduating seniors. And uh, to be eligible for those, you just have to be a Mount Anthony student that donated some time over the last four years to our Booster Club. So opening our um, uh, field in the spring, where it's only going to grow the number of games that the Booster Club can work, and therefore helping um, students with uh, possibly earning money for their teams, but also scholarships and growing um, how much they can offer in scholarships or the quantity of the scholarships. Um, again, we mentioned this already, but opening for uh, tournaments, uh, those of you that are lacrosse families, um, I know Middlebury is known for their youth lacrosse uh, tournaments that they do uh, in uh, the summers, and that brings a lot of people to the community. Uh, those of you who uh, remember all the youth tournaments that Scott Legacy seems to have with uh, Monty Anthony's youth wrestling program, I know trying to get a spot in a restaurant on a Friday night while that tournament was going on was always tough. These are things that we can open. I know people have reached out about using, hey, if you go to Turf, is this, is this something that we could do? It's something we can discuss. Um, the Storm, uh, Southern Vermont Storm, semi pro football, but other uh, sports camps and uh, tournaments. Um, again, we're in an ideal location between our high school and close proximity to the middle school, the field across the street, and Willow Park. If you think about lacrosse, that's one, two, three four fields that could be used simultaneously for a tournament. Um, think of the number of uh, people that could come in for those tournaments and uh, the entry fees, the hotels, the restaurants, how that revenue comes into our town. So that is uh, all potential uh, for our uh, community. Uh, so that's the end of the uh, uh, slides show presentation. Uh, if anyone has any questions, I would like to Invite people either um, if you're on the Zoom, you have to raise your hand and we can unmute you, or anyone here in person if you'd like, just ask you to come to the mic and identify yourself um, by name and community. Questions? Sam, come on up. Hi, Sam. Hi, Sam. Rashino, Bennington, Vermont. Um, Thanks for having this informative meeting. Um, as a whole, is there any way of breaking it down to just the track and the lighting, and then at another time do the turf field instead of doing it all at once? That's a great question, Sam. Thank you for asking. That. As a committee, I know Mike, you were the chair the first time. As a committee, we looked at that, and that was an avenue we looked at maybe a seven-year period. Um, we found that it added a significant cost, almost fifty percent. The project itself almost doubled. It's going to be closer to I think seven million. The number I remember. I don't have the exact numbers. I know it was high because those same companies that come in, it's the same groups. 
So you'd have to, you know, they come in and they did the track one year, that same company would have to come back two, three years later, bring the same people, same equipment back again, and then also do the turf. So there was a significant savings that we felt by spreading it out, wasn't doing a service to taxpayer dollars by doing it spread out. Uh, the other issue is if you do the track first and then you do the field, now you have to drive over the track or build a bridge to bring all that equipment over. So what damage would we do to a brand new track to two years later have the two fields done? So uh, great question. That's one of the questions we asked um, as a committee ourselves and found it just wasn't feasible to do that. On that AstroTurf, what's the lifespan of that? Uh, currently, they guarantee it for eight years. Uh, Rutland High School is on their 15th year this year. I think they're an outlier, clearly. Uh, but they guarantee it for up to eight years. And there is a replacement. And then after the eight years, we start all over again with the cost. Yeah, it's not starting from the beginning. I mean, it's a great question, too. It's a question a lot of people have. Uh, so there's there's several options. There's a recycle and there's a reuse. So one of the reuse possibility, depending on what company we go with, you know, they can take all that infill and they clean it up and put it right back in. Uh, Field Turf is actually even experimenting with a, a new one where they actually resurface over your existing. And that actually adds safety and shock absorbance because they're just putting right over so they don't recycle. Really, you don't have to have to recycle your field. They're just putting a new one right over. They kind of trim the edges and tuck it in. And it gives it that natural um, uh, like drainage, you know, that um, that's the word I'm looking for. Brown, brown. Brown, thank you. Uh, and then there's the other option, which I didn't realize. Uh, you know, you go back 20 years ago, that stuff got, you know, dug up, thrown right into the trash. Now, some companies are taking it and they're cleaning it, they're sterilizing it, and they're turning it into um, uh, decking material. So you can use it for building supplies. So they, they, they do what they need to do to it. And now it becomes like, uh, I don't want to use Trex. Uh, that's the name brand most people know. But it's synthetic. Um, Positive, yeah, right. hard work, hard work, hard work, hard yeah, composite deck. Thank you. And uh, I thought, I just again, these are some questions that have come up, and those are the answers. So the recycling option um, is there. The replacement costs aren't the exact amount of just, it's not the full. Uh, you know, one dollar amount I saw was um, quoted at seven hundred thousand. They use um, I don't remember the exact square. But it's based on the square footage. Uh, so the way I looked at it, running quick math, you know, say we we do this, um, this gets approved. We pay that three hundred fifty thousand over ten years. Okay, year eleven, if it's still in good shape, we don't have a payment anymore. Not if the board has an option where we could take that three, leave that money in the budget, put that three hundred fifty thousand into a reserve account, they can authorize that. So then year 12, hey, it's still in good shape. Let's put that 350000 again into the reserve account. So future dollars, I'm thinking probably about a million dollars for a place 15 years from now. So in year 13, you put another 350000 Now we have a million dollars in the reserve account. Year 14, we've got the money. We resurface it in year 14, take that money from the reserve. And now, so 14 years from now, we could be out on our second turf field and have no, no payment anymore. We can take that out of our budget altogether. Or if we again want to be smart and budget for it, we reduce that 350 down to 100,000 and we put 100,000 every year into the uh, reserve account. And that's what we're currently spending for 20 events a year is 100,000. So I look at it by budgeting this way and paying for it in 14 years, we could be spending the same amount we're paying today on a brand new facility in our second phase of it. By the third phase, I hope to be retired and someone else can be doing it. <laughs> With Bennington building a, a working relationship on the, on the turf, what's the longevity of the businesses? I mean, I hope they're in one long standing for a business per se. If Bennington, the SVSU is doing business with a certain company for an installation and for some reason they don't do it anymore, we have to start all over again from scratch. Um, field turf is known throughout. They're, they're the they're real player. Field Turfer and Astro Turf are the two main companies. There's a couple of others, but Field Turf has done the last several in Vermont. Uh, they just did a Castleton one uh, that was resurfaced uh, this past summer. And uh, I think uh, they're going to be in a long, there's, they're putting turf fields in all over the place. So I didn't quite hear where the, the longevity of the bond vote is what, 10 years? Or? That, yeah, again, whatever the best terms would be, that was one quote that we received as a committee was that if you spread it out over 10 years, that would be the payment. If the interest rate and the payments happen to be better for eight years, then we could do it over eight. But that's decisions that the Miami board will come or come to the board that they'll make. Um, same with the, like, the filling and what type of service. The Miami, there really isn't, the project isn't designed yet. You know, right. I, I look at, you know, uh, I look at an opportunity for our students with this project. 
I think it'd be great for the students to say, hey, what logo goes at the center? What logos go in the end zone? Partnering with Southwest Tech and the graphic design and how could they help design it? Um, maybe have a community vote on, hey, what color should the track be? Should it be blue? Should it be red? Should it be black? So I really look at this as an opportunity to get the kids' voice involved. Yeah, the students involved, involved. Yeah. yes. Um, as you know, the school was built in 1966. Yes. And an aging school. So when we get through this, coming down the pike, you know where I'm heading to it. When the school starts turning to be 100 years old, do we renovate the school or do we rebuild the whole from scratch? And that's yeah, way down yeah. to be determined. That's a, that's a great but question. That, that, that's in the parameters off to the left side. Yeah. But thank you. That, thank you. Sam, thank you for your great questions. Those were, um, I'm glad I could answer most of them. Um, but yeah, the, uh, this, a lot of schools throughout the state are dealing with that same uh, process right now where you have an aging school system throughout the state. And Sure, uh, smarter people than I will figure that problem out. <laughs> there are any questions on? Nope. So, if anyone's obviously you can't unmute yourself, but you have an option of raising your hand digitally. If there's someone there that wants to speak that's online, if you could raise your hand digitally uh, so we know that you might have a question to ask. I want to make sure everyone has a chance to answer. Any other questions from the audience? So, just the people recording. I can bring the mic to you if that helps. Okay. I just want I just want to make sure people at home can hear you as well. Hi. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Alyssa Trudell. Thanks for having this presentation. I'm the varsity lacrosse coach here at Mount Anthony. Uh, I am a big fan of this idea. It's going to be an incredible give back to our program and to the future of I think the community of Bennington and beyond. Question I had was, um, considering this is gonna be a big in uptick for business, I'm wondering what the uh, year round management model is gonna look like as far as making sure that things get scheduled and things of that are gonna be managed in the off seasons and because it's gonna be a lot, so. It's a great question for Tony. I don't know, we, you know, the plan would be similar to our current plan. Right. Um, but our outdoor um, landscaping, um, they wouldn't have to put as many hours in. There's, uh, okay, so but, if it was a high school or if it was an out, like... No, there's something yeah, we could do in-house. Right. I mean, there are options to have a company come in and instead of having to um, get equipment, um, you know, there's, there are options. Right. right. I, can, I can answer this a little bit. I don't, I mean, I didn't specifically schedule it. Yeah. Like, this is, yeah, the scheduling and management of it just on the, like, calendar. Well, there, there's, the there's a couple of different options, like Chad was saying. We've had we've reached out and found out that there's companies that will actually come and train our guys. We can purchase the equipment and we can do it or we can outsource it to a company to come in and, and do the work on the field. So um, you're you're talking about an average. I think we got a quote on average of about fifteen thousand dollars a year. That's it to maintain that field. So you, you look at all the stuff that we're spending money on. There's no more paint. There's no more lawn cutting. There's no, you know, there's nothing. That field looks as good as it looks all the time. It gets basically fluffed and, and refilled, and that's it, you know, once a year. So, you know, and the guys, to Chad's point, what he was explaining before, they can spend all their time working on the other fields. They don't have to worry about that one so much. And that's some, a lot of that work can be done during the school day. Oh, sure. It won't impact practices or right. any scheduling. And then other events, uh, tournaments, a lot of that stuff will happen outside of the school year. So if we bring in a community partner to run a camp, it'd be June, July, and August. So right. the, the school sports would take the priority of use of them. I bet specifically if I was wanting to rent the space, like yeah. is who's the managing body that would be contacting? Is it MAU? That would be our athletic director. So then all summer long, all off season, everything's being scheduled through the high school. Yes. Okay, cool. That was, yeah. that was really my question. Sorry. Oh, okay. Yeah. Thank you for explaining well, hey. that. That's very <laughs> but I was, yeah. I was wondering, like, year of long is a lot of extra stuff. Yes. And we have a lot going on to our sports programs already, but I didn't know in the summertime, if there's tournaments and other stuff, it's all through high school. Yep. Thank you. That's, that's cool. Great question. I'm Scott McEnany from Shaftesbury. Um, to, to, I understand the, the um, idea that tournaments could come here. Um, and that that could be an additional source of revenue for the school and also for the community. My question um, is really, if if it were to if the field were to stay in its current condition or in its current condition, are there current limitations with schools willing to come here and compete, whether it's on the track or on the field, or um, and what does that look like, and and how would this help with um, that? Yeah, um, I mean. I 
talking with coaches pre-game, post-game, current coaches, um, like, I know um, there's been uh, complaints. Uh, I know lacrosse playoff game had to be held. Um, I think there was a Vermont, the, 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 I remember reading the brother's pre press. Uh, there was a Vermont playoff game hosted in Massachusetts several years ago. Uh, opening um, um, our, we've had to cancel games with not even bad weather, but just the field itself wasn't across the street, wasn't uh, still had rain, still muddy. So we've had uh, away games at South Burlington was more than happy to host an away game at their turf field on their facility for lacrosse. So we've had to send lacrosse for a home game to South Burlington. Um, I don't know if that answers your question. We also, yeah. we I, also can't even host any um, state tournaments ever. Yes. Um, yeah, um, state tournaments, uh, for, uh, the VPA is required that all football state championships be held on a turf facility. Uh, I don't know if any other sports have made that an actual requirement for the state championships, but it is um, uh, preferred. And well, and I think my question is coming from uh, this may be a rumor, but that I had heard that we're extremely limited with the track meets that we can hold currently due to the dips in the in the track being a hazard. Paul or Mike might be able to answer that better. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, I, I, I don't know that um, we're limited just yet right now but i think going forward in the next few years i mean the i know when you have track meets now you have to take the runners and you show them where the problems are on the track it's only getting worse um i know soccer you know the coaches know that the, the field is not regulation you know in terms of size it's too small and we end up using uh the field up at Southern Vermont College sometimes because it's a bigger field and it's better, you know, for the sport. Um, I don't know that we still have access to that anymore. So, you know, so we've been lucky the last couple of years to have that as an alternative. Um, I don't know that it's there, but I know track is only getting worse and we've got to do something because right now it's not it's not safe for some of the runners in in those those couple of lanes that we've shown you. So. Sure. Um, yeah. I need mean, to, um, to elaborate on that. Uh, you know, for our track team, I have we I, we have a, have a very gifted athlete, nationally ranked. Uh, she just broke our school record by just popping, just crushed it. I'm not going to have a long jump at our pit ever. Like she will never do that. It's never going to happen, just for safety reasons. Um, I'm not comfortable putting her in that position or any of my athletes for that matter. So, and the track is getting worse. Lanes one and three, there's a divot. And like Chad said before, track meets. I take the coaches around. I put cones there just for spots. So am I comfortable having a track meet here? Kind of. Uh, well, I mean, it's not, it's at a point where I, we need a better track, right? It's really, really, it's kind of, you know, there's not many tracks in the state of Vermont. In the beginning of the year, we put out like all different surf uh, tracks and we're lucky to have one. But at the point, like I said, I am, it's, I have to be honest, I don't run in lanes one and three with my guys in the 200 meters. The, when the coals made a couple years ago, the people fall off the finish line. It's just, it's over 20 years old. So it's really falling apart. So, it's just sad that we can't do what I need to do with some of my athletes who are really, you know, that nationally ranked athletes. So, um, yeah, hopefully that answers the question. So, thank you. You're welcome. Chad, you've got um, Michael. Uh, that's going to answer us. Okay. Where's my mouse? Um, Michael, uh, play sense. I'm uh, giving you permission to speak. You've got your. Uh, there you go. Your uh, floor is yours, Mike. Uh, hi, so I have a, a short question, but most of what I would like to say is just a short bit about why I think this is important and how I think the question needs to be framed to people who are interested in voting on this is, so a lot of times, so for introduction, my name is Mike Plazons. I'm a former alumni of Anthony High School. I graduated in 2013. Uh, I'm actually, I mean, I'm currently a certified athletic trainer. I work in the state of New York, but I am also licensed in the state of Vermont. And so most people know their athletic trainer is the person that they see at every sports game everywhere all the time. So um, I have worked in division two college sports. I have worked in some entry level professional sports as well. Um, and field inspection is part of something that I do. You know, it's part of my day when I arrive to a new location. It's something that I walk around the field by myself everyone's getting ready to see if there are any problem areas. 
Um, and the way I think the question gets framed too often in just general public light is, is grass or turf better? If you're talking about in a vacuum, what do athletes want to play on? What do they prefer? And I can tell you that because there's a lot of sentiment that generally people would say grass. They want to play on grass. But what that comes with is the expectation of one game, one participant or one group of participants on a, on a field with good conditions. And now if you frame the question more broadly and say, what is right for a, an entire school, a district, a community? What, some of the things about equity that Chad pointed out in the beginning become really important because I remember when I was there in 2009 through 13, the football team and the soccer teams were like the only teams that got to use it. You got to use it once a week, whether it be because of weather, just because of sheer volume of people running over different spots, the high traffic areas get worn down faster, and then other people don't get to use it at all. So I think that's one of the most important things is to frame it in that way is that we're asking the questions, what is best for everybody and what's going on. And now as far as like safety goes with turf and um, the turf and natural grass fields, I think that the evidence is, is pretty mixed. Um, and I think that we have a great resource here that can answer some questions about the current state of research, whether there's any significant increased risk of injury in general in grass versus turf. Um, and so that's one of my questions is, how, is there any research that demonstrates that turf is significantly more dangerous to play on versus grass? You know, Mike, um, great question. Uh, we have as a committee looked at that, and, you know, depending on what studies you use and who put those out, um, they're going to give you different results. Um, stuff I could find that was peer reviewed and followed that process um, really didn't say what you like, kind of what you said, that one didn't show more injuries versus the other. Did that help? He's back. Oh, yes. Okay. We have another hand up or not? Nope. All right. Uh, any other questions here? Come on, Vincent. How are you thinking here? Nope. Okay. Again, anyone at home while we uh, take another question from Sam, if you could raise your hand, um, we'll know to unmute you to ask your question. I, mean, I was just waiting until everybody came around to ask a question, then around again. Um, with the SVSU, we, as you know, we have other towns, Whitford, Shaftesbury, Arlington. Do any of the outside towns um, contribute financial funding to this field? I mean, you know, Bennington is getting a worn map. And if other towns are going to be using Bennington for their enjoyment, I'm sorry, they got to pay a fee. Uh, great question. Um, yes, um, this is the Mount Anthony School District, which encompasses um, North Bennington, Pownall, uh, Shaftesbury, Woodford, and Bennington. So um, when you get your tax bill, you might not see it, but it's broken out. You have your local property tax, and then you have your school taxes based on the SVU ESD and the Mount Anthony portion. So those are the three that make up your local. So anyone that lives in those, so Arlington, they're part of their own district. Uh, they pay their own school tax, but um, so it's not an SVSU tax. It's a Mount Anthony Union school district tax. So those communities, absolutely. And again, that was kind of what I was talking about earlier. Um, Pownall, Shaftesbury, Woodford, have, um, and North Bennington, I'm not forgetting any of them. Have a, they all have different rates. So that's why, depending on where you live, it's anywhere from the one cent to one and a half. Again, on today's dollars, I'll make that clear. The legislature's still talking about even changing the law for the budgets our boards have already approved. Hoping it's, if they change it, it's in our favor. Um, and that'll only help with this project if uh, the yields change. Um, but I know the, the tax law is harder and calculating property tax for high school or for education funding is harder than advanced calculus because I see it every day. I teach calculus every day and trying to figure out both. I'll do derivatives and integrals any day over <laughs> education tax. Other questions? What's the timeline? Great question. Um, so uh, for the people in here, you timeline, repeat, yeah, repeat. yeah. Uh, <laughs> what's the timeline? Uh, hopefully March 5th. Well, uh, you know, this is a uh, approval. Uh, and then after, um, we can then, uh, the Monica Board can seek bids uh, for someone to put a bid in, uh, seeking uh, a pro capital upgrades to uh, synthetic turf, track, and lights. Hopefully, we get some good competitive bids from varying companies, and then the board will decide uh, which company to go with. 
uh, you know, in past practice, it's not always the lowest bidder wins. It's the best, what's best for the uh, school. Uh, but hopefully we have some good competitive bids. And then, um, you know, talking with people, once they get going, um, we have already done um, a geotechnical uh, survey of our field. So that, that's something we own. What's being done? Yeah. Yeah. So it's it's uh, it's being done. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So they, did they dig last week? No, we're digging. If it doesn't snow tomorrow, we're digging Thursday. Okay, there you go. So, so that's being done as we speak. That's something as a district we own and can give to any company. That will only help the design process because they'll know how far to dig down and whatnot. But a uh, quick timeline, if uh, um, hopefully this time next year, we could probably start construction. So the design phase will go through the fall and then they'll have to put it out to bid to other, uh, you know, they have their contractors they use, could be someone local or whatever, but then I know uh, the lighting companies and others, will, you know, the company works almost like a general contract. And then hopefully this time we're breaking ground, this time next year we could be breaking ground and then playing on it in the fall of 25. Yep. So spring of 2025 is the hopefully the begin the process and then over the summer and then ready to ready to play on it fall 2025. The doctor was wondering that we had any questions. Oh, he's on. Is he on there? What's his name? I can unmute him. Um, it might be he might be someone that could answer Mike's question. Yeah. Um, is that William Douglas? Yes. Um, William, I'm going to ask you to unmute, and maybe you can. Um, I'm hearing um, you might have a background that you could explain, um, possibly answer Mike's question, Mike Plaisant's question about the research. Hey there, can you hear me? Yeah, yes. Hey, yeah. Um, Thanks for having me. My name's uh, Will Douglas. I'm a sports medicine doc <clears throat> in the Albany area. Um, my background is in uh, physiatry, uh, physical medicine rehabilitation. I did a sports fellowship uh, out in Maine at Maine Medical Center. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I'm not sure if anyone has any specific questions, but, you know, just the background information <clears throat> on the safety of, of turf versus grass. I think it's well established that the older generations of turf were associated with more injuries, um, but the technology has changed a lot and it also depends on environmental conditions, but I don't think there's any, it's, it's hard to say. I mean, the evidence is kind of, it's been talked about by someone in the audience and, and Mike mentioned it too, that there's a lot of mixed evidence. You know, you read one study and it's like, oh, turf is safer than grass. And you're another study, it's like, oh, grass is safer than turf. Um, there was a, a more recent kind of comprehensive study that came out about a year ago, and sometimes they basically concluded that uh, at higher levels, like in the NFL, over a short amount of time, they looked at there were some more knee injuries uh, on turf versus grass. Um, but I think in general, it's it's hard to apply that to all kinds of sports um, at different levels with different environmental hazards uh, as they may be. So. Yeah, I think ultimately it's hard to take away anything very specific. Um, as Mike was sort of saying, some I think most athletes or a lot of athletes may have preferences for for grass over turf, but you know that's in like a perfect world when you have a perfect condition um, and not necessarily uh, the most functional or practical thing. But so I think the evidence is mixed essentially, and it's hard to really make strong conclusions. And there's there's actually a lack of good research and data around uh, the subject. But isn't it, doctor, isn't it um, safe to say that it's much safer playing on a, a flat field rather than one that's pitted with holes and at an even level, right? So whether it's grass or turf, um, an even level's better. Yeah, I think that's a pretty reasonable statement. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, I mean, I saw some of the pictures of the fields and, you know, how I've played on a lot of, in, in my, back in my day, played on a lot of fields that were regrettable, really hard, uneven potholes. Yeah, I think that a level playing surface probably trumps, um, you know, kind of an uneven and field with holes in it, you know, that's, that's certainly fair to say. Um, this is Chad again. Um, I'm just going to ask, you know, anecdotally, I know it's hard for you to say, uh, you know, statistically speaking, but in your practice, and uh, I'm assuming you see um, high school athletes, 
you haven't seen an increase in one versus the other injuries that have occurred to high school athletes on the turf or um, grass that was noticeably different on either surface? I don't think I can say that at all. I, I, I don't think I can say that I have a anecdotal sense that, you know, oh, this person got injured all day or probably on a turf field. I, that's, that's not something that has been my experience, um, you know? So that's what I would say. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. So I think one of the things we need to also look at, uh, I understand that, that that is some concerns of some people, but, and I know the NFL has said that they're going, you know, they want to go to grass and all this kind of stuff, but unless the MAU school committees, or, or the, I should say the school district, wants to start paying for an NFL type, uh, you know, organization to take care of our grass fields, you're either going to have a turf field that's safe and, and good for kids to, to do whatever, whether it be gym or sports or, you know, events or whatever, or you're going to have a field that with all the work that we've done in the past two years, you're going to end up with the same thing where I remember talking to Nicole before the playoff game this year, we weren't even sure that the, the, the high school kids were going to be able to make a playoff game for soccer on their own field. So to me, that's, it's a no brainer. I mean, you know, we're not going to, you know, we're not going to have the, uh, the Patriots ground crew here taking care of the, of the field, you know, from, from the New England Patriots. So, you know, I think that's where we need to look at the fact that, you know, in a safety standpoint, it's a no-brainer for me. I know um, with the Super Bowl last night, uh, people sent me all types of articles. And uh, last night's grass field was approximately $800,000 the NFL spent on one game. And they started growing it two years ago. It's, bro it's grown on pallets and seeds. And uh, so two years of development, 800000 And after last night's game, it's possible that it'll get donated to a horse farm or other recreational use for horses. Tori, it's uh, got a question. Sure. All right. Uh, Tori Rich, I'm gonna unmute you. Or I'm gonna ask you to unmute. Where'd you go? Why'd it jump? Tori, did you have a question? Uh, yes, I wanted to uh, ask Mr. Douglas or Dr. Douglas. Sorry, I didn't catch that. Um, but I was wondering about also a lot of these studies do cite the NFL, and I wanted to uh, ask uh, your take on it as far as. NFL players are getting uh, bigger, heavier, stronger, producing more forces. And I just, uh, they, they produce more force than even NFL players did 20 years ago, never mind high school athletes. And so I wanted to ask your take on that as well in terms of the trend of, you know, increased turf injuries, but there could be other factors such as that. Is that also a reasonable take? Give me one second. I have to unmute him as well, I believe. Hey there. Um, yeah, I mean, I think that's an interesting point. Um, I think, but I do think that some of the studies probably try to equalize that, you know, try to account for that. Um, but I think in general, yeah, in a lot of sports, athletes are getting faster, stronger, you know, things are, um, you know, velocity is increasing, uh, strength is increasing. So yeah, you know, there is an argument that, that that has a role for the increased amount of injuries that may or may not happen. But I think in those studies, they are trying to account for those variables and and compare apples to apples. Thank you. See any more hands on that? Um, question, comment? I'd like to uh, encourage people. For the, those of you that Dave Fredrickson, <laughs> former coach, teacher, and presently on the school board. Uh, here's one of the reasons I would encourage people to vote for Spinelli Field. I look at it as renovating a classroom because Spinelli Field is a classroom, and there are lessons learned in that classroom that you don't learn in English, math, and science. Um, and Sam, you mentioned that uh, this building came in '67. I came with the building. When I retired, I said, we both needed some repairs. 
I've had a lot of repairs, but Spinelli hasn't. I think the time is now to do that. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, my name is Nicole Sauer, the girls varsity um, soccer coach. Um, I'm excited for this project and what it can bring to our community. Um, I have a question about usage. I'm noticing other um, clubs are already out on their turf for soccer specifically, um, training right now um, as the with the milder temperatures. What does the usage look like in a calendar year for sports and um, you know, the sun melting naturally, one thing, and is snow removal an option? Great question. I know um, this, this, the schools that don't plow it get a longer use life of their turf. Obviously, if you're going to plow snow off using the machinery, it's going to affect the, the usage of the carpet. So we're probably uh, low, less than the amount of years we get out of that surface. Uh, but it, as you said, as soon as it melts, uh, if people are on it, as soon as it melts, it, it dries very, there's not, it's not standing water, it drains very well. And, uh, and so, it melts fast. yeah, and melts fast. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so yeah, usage uh, in the winter, I'm sure, is uh, something that will be. They don't, don't they have heating options underneath some turf? I think I had that when they put in my turf in college. They did that. They did, yeah. Again, if uh, if it falls on the budget, that's a, yeah. a possibility that they could add. Um, uh, you know, even the infill. I know in the Northeast, you know, the, those those pellets are that like black pellet yeah, um, that helps with the solar gain in the winter. Um, there are some uh, more environmentally safe options that tend to freeze that are made of like coconut husks, but they tend to freeze and be harder in the Northeast. So you don't normally see those um, north of like uh, North Carolina. I'll just. Uh... You know, I, I do know when we were talking about the, the structure of, of the turf and the field turf, it's the under, you know, layer that matters the most. And I know there's a company that will come in and it'll go to bid that'll work on, you know, the base layer and the stones and the, all the stuff that we're talking about. That's what matters sometimes more than the actual surface of the, you know, to be able to to have that base level layer set up properly and the drainage and all that. Um, so to, to work on that and to kind of have that go to bid as well, what we see on the top is the field, but having that, that base layer done properly, same with the track, like all that has to be done uh, properly as well. Well, if we are at that hour mark, we can keep going. If there's any other questions, I want to keep answering questions from people here in the audience or anyone at home. Um, so I'll just last call for people at home uh, for any questions that uh, you'd like to ask. Just I'm not seeing it. anyone else any further questions. There's another meeting, right? There is. Thank you. That's where I was going to end if we didn't have any other questions. Uh, Tuesday, the 27th is the official Mount Anthony warning of the article, and we'll do another presentation of this. That'll be run by the Mount Anthony board. It'll be held in these seats at 530 again on the 27th. That's a Tuesday, one week prior to the March 5th vote. Um, Michael has got one more question. Okay. Um, Mike, I'm asking you to unmute if you want. There you go. Yeah, I don't. I don't have a question as much as an anecdote for the previous question about snow removal. So, um, in my previous experience in college athletics, with spring season coming, every coach, especially soccer coaches, I can remember in particular, chomping to get at the bit, wanting to get their athletes out there for skill practice as soon as they can. Um, but plowing the turf wasn't an option for many reasons due to safe, you know, concern of the turf's longevity. At, at that point in time, the turf that we were working was not the best turf in the world. It was quite old. It was 20 years old, I believe, at the time. Um, but coaches would bring shovels. And for skill drills, they would shovel some of the center of the turf enough so that they could get the practice that they need in, sharpen those skills that may get a little bit of rusty in the winter, it's not that you need the full field, you're not playing a game, you don't need to zoom the whole field, but that was a safe option that brought the brought the team together and got them able to get out there and do their skill practice when they needed to. So I just thought that was a, a useful anecdote. Thank you, Mike. That's a great idea. Any good coach is going to find a way to get a space. Jeez. <laughs> I'm Barbara Ludo, a grandmother. And uh, when you have the March 27th meeting, or sorry, February. February. 27th meeting. Is that going to be televised by Cat TV? We can, um, yeah. it's going to be on Zoom, and I believe they're sharing the Zoom. I, I don't know if they're putting on their public access. It's something we can look into, make sure it's on their public access. And I know it's uh, 
it's going to be on social media. They they usually always put their stuff on Facebook. Are you making this same presentation, or will it be a different? They, Cat TV is present right now in the Zoom meeting. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Mike Norman has his. Okay. Uh, All right. Thank you. Um, I'm stepping on wires. I'm going to unplug something. Um, Mike Norman, I'm giving you the option to unmute. Can you hear me, Chad? And Mike, loud and clear. All right, folks, my name is Mike Norman. I'm the athletic director here at Rutland High School. And l listening to everything reminds me of, you know, almost 20 years ago when we were going through the same process. You know, we, we bonded our field. We did the track over, the lights over, and we did the, the field over. And I had just taken over as the athletic director. And the mistake that we made is that we did not put in an artificial surface at that particular point in time. So... Consequently, a year later or two, whenever we started playing on the grass, it just started getting beat up. And then, you know, fortunately for us, we had some folks that dug into their bank accounts and were able to start it and fundraise and put turf in. And our turf is 15 years old, and we're actually going to replace our turf field this summer. But uh, I can tell you from where I sit, and again, I, you know, I don't live in Bennington, but I think our communities are pretty similar. I think when you do this you will look back and say why did not why did we not, did, didn't do this sooner it will just be such a, a positive thing for, for community certainly for the athletic teams um you know your band your your, your pe people i don't know if you're going to leave your facility open ours is open to the public and people treat it great and like i said you know chad said it's eight eight to ten years and uh, we're gonna go forward we're going to purchase our field this time uh from uh, field turf and uh it has been such a positive thing for us I, w I wish we could i wish we could do more you know i think everybody would like to play on grass i do coach football but uh, the last i knew that you know on a grass field you're only supposed to play 10 games in a calendar year so our place is no different than yours we're playing football we're playing soccer but the, the teams that have really benefited from it are the spring sports, particularly, uh, you know, the lacrosse teams, because everybody loves lacrosse except when they're digging up their fields. So, you know, I, I just uh, volunteered my services here. So if anybody has any questions for me, uh, I'd be more than happy to, to answer them for you. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. I appreciate that. Um, I'll be the first one to ask. I know this, but I know a lot of people don't. How many uh, football teams <laughs> You posted on your turf field figures. Say that again. I'm sorry, Chad. How many football state championships have you hosted on your field, your turf field? We've hosted, oh boy, I'm going to say somewhere around 10. And, um, you know, it's just, it, it's a nice, it, it, we used to have championships here, but it used to be weather dependent. And now that just totally takes away that concern, particularly for you. Mike Malloy being the athletic director, you know, you're going to have other problems because people are going to want to get on, on your service, but uh, yeah. it, 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 it's a better problem to have, to be quite honest with you. And um, when you have the, the state championships for football, they have three games a day there. Have you heard feedback from uh, community partners, uh, restaurants, hotels, business owners about the impact on the city during that weekend? Well, when we started doing it here, when we were getting hammered because of the drug issues that, you know, the entire state has, and it was a great opportunity for us to kind of put a positive spin or the face of Rutland. And uh, it was just a great community event and have people coming together. And I think it's given a lot of other schools the impetus to look into this, to possibly put a turf field or facility uh, in their community as well. Thanks, Mike. Anyone else? Any members or public have questions for Mike? Mike, thank you for coming tonight, taking the time out of your busy schedule. I appreciate it. Actually, every, and everyone at home, not just Mike. I know we've had several people. Um, get, so I thank everyone that dialed in from home. Um, no more hands up? Yeah. Uh, no more questions here? All right. Well, again, I want to thank everyone. For, I really appreciate it. Um, the effort that you put in to be here, people watching at home, thank you as well. Um, if you're not registered to vote, please register to vote. Um, you can register online. You can also register the day of elections in Vermont. You don't have, you can register in person, um, but please vote, make your voice heard. Either way, just make sure you have your voices heard. The next meeting will be uh, Tuesday, February 27th at 5.30 p.m. 
feel free to come back. If you have questions, uh, you can feel free to email me and I'll try to uh, respond to those. Um, quick email is just C Gordon, G O R D O N, at SVSU.org. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Chad. Thank you. Yeah, she's pretty good for talking about it.